You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. We have a huge alteration system that we see is mineralized, not only in historical drilling, uh, but also on our own surface work. And so, you know, if you take a look at Caspiche, which is right beside our property, uh, 25 million ounces of gold, and I think it's six and a half billion pounds of copper, you know, we have a shot at maybe a couple of those, you know, I mean, not saying it's going to happen, but we see those porphyry centers across our project. So we have a huge system, largely undrilled. Welcome back to Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. In today's episode, we're getting an update from Torque Resources. By way of reminder, Torque's a longtime sponsor. They are a Chilean copper gold and gold copper explorer in Chile. And joining me is the chief geologist, Michael Hendrickson. Michael, welcome back onto the program. And you have drills turning at your Santa Cecilia project. Uh, could you give us an update here and what are you trying to accomplish? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, Bill. Um, at Santa Cecilia, we started drilling roughly about a month ago. Uh, it's the, the very first drilling that Torx done there, obviously. So great to uh, to have that rig turning. You know, we really consider the first phase of drilling about fifteen thousand meters to get ourselves across the various targets that we have. Um, you know, we we anticipate drilling into May, at which point we'll probably need to take a break uh, for the Chilean winter. You know, it just gets too hard and expensive up there with snow. Uh, at which point we'll we'll head down to our other project at Margarita, uh, and we look to resume in Santa Cecilia in October, and then we'll take that right through till May of 2024. So we're good to get the rigs turning, good to get uh, across our first target, uh, and we you know we certainly look to to realize the potential of the various porphyry targets that we've identified in our field work since December. And before you elaborate on the conceptual model you're working with, could you remind listeners what we're dealing with here? You actually inherited or purchased a discovery made about a decade ago, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. I mean, Santa Cecilia is surrounded by Norte Abierto, which is a joint venture between Barrick and Newmont, which represents the fourth largest uh, undeveloped gold project on the planet. So the endowment around us is, you know, world class. Um, we have a huge alteration system that we see is mineralized, not only in historical drilling, uh, but also on our own surface work. And so, you know, if you take a look at Caspiche, which is right beside our property, uh, 25 million ounces of gold, and I think it's six and a half billion pounds of copper, you know, we have a shot at maybe a couple of those, you know, I mean, not saying it's going to happen, but we see those porphyry centers across our project. So we have a huge system, largely undrilled. Uh, the previous owner, a very well-known Chilean mining entrepreneur, drilled a couple of deeper holes in, in 2012 uh, beneath some oxide gold uh, that was drilled by Anglo back in 88 to 1990. Uh, and in 2012, he, he drilled these holes and found the porphyry because in the meantime, of course, 22 years of nothing happening, these porphyries had been discovered. He thought, well, maybe I've got one. And sure enough, he did. Um, the intercept that he got was about 925 meters of 0.45 copper equivalent. And what's really interesting about this and, and sort of the thesis of why we're, we're currently at this Cerro del Medio target is we know that that's all wall rock, sort of the halo, the fringe of a potential deposit. And if you look at Caspiche, you know, it's got about 150 meter wide body that's really carrying in most of the grade. Uh, that's where Exeter was drilling these beautiful thousand meter holes of, you know, gram per ton gold and 0 0.4, 0 0.5% copper. And then from that, that core of the deposit, it started to get lower grade out into the wall rock. We believe that it was only wall rock that was intercepted in that 925 meters. And we're looking for the high grade right now. Mm. So that's, that's the paradigm or the conceptual model you're comparing what you're doing to. Precisely. Yeah. We've got a great deposit like immediately beside us. So it's uh, pretty easy for us to, to take that as an analog. And in fact, you know, we've, you know, as a geo, you know, we do a bunch of age dating and a bunch of geological work and it's all the same. You know, we, we are in the same mineralizing system. And so, you know, let's get the drill bit across these target areas. And how many drills do you have turning as we speak? Just one right now. We wanted to kind of start off a little bit slow, get our feet under us. Uh, you know, we have got a pile of surface work still ongoing up there because nothing had been done since 1990. Uh, so we'll reconsider what that looks like come October. Uh, you know, obviously we're cognizant of getting some results out to the market as soon as we can. Um, but for now, it's just one rig. And when should we expect those results? How, how soon is the turnaround here? 
Yeah, it's just still labs are a bit slow. So, you know, I would say, you know, probably sometime in August so we can get that first drill hole out. Um, and then of course, in the meantime, you know, we, we fully anticipate, you know, starting our drill program down at Margarita. And so we'll kind of have continuous results starting now. We're going to be very catalyst rich for the next, you know, year plus. And of course you have all your community agreements in place. You have your permits for the next year plus and, and the program's funded. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're in good shape with respect to the community. We've got, uh, you know, a community agreement that lasts the length of our option agreement for seven years. So, you know, we're very solid in that way, which is extremely important. Um, and then with respect to the funding of the program, you know, we, you know, we, we have the Goldfields money still that we're working with and we've been utilizing obviously to our advantage. Um, you know, we may look to, to raise some additional capital for Santa Cecilia, uh, you know, for the future, but certainly for now, we're in we're in good shape. So at Santa Cecilia, you're following up on a discovery someone else made, but at Margarita, now you're following up on a discovery that you led a team into. So can you talk about the progress at Margarita? Yeah, certainly. I mean, Margarita is situated between uh, Lundin's Candelaria deposit and then Capstone's uh, Santo Domingo and Manto Verde iron oxide copper gold deposits, right? And we've we've come out of nowhere and made a brand new discovery, which has been beautiful. Um, one of the unique features of this discovery was the gold content. It was extremely high for this type of deposit, unusual, in fact. And it led us to... Um, it led us to have to redo the geochemical grid because at the start, cheap and cheerful, we were just looking for copper. We thought that was the only thing that would be, you know, uh, available to us to find. Uh, and lo and behold, all of a sudden, you know, if you drill 0.5% uh, copper, you're drilling half a gram gold. If you drill a gram gold, you're drilling a percent copper. It's amazing the correlation. So we went back and did a, a gold geochemistry grid because we had noticed that in our drilling, a lot of the copper had been leached from the top 20, 30 meters from surface. So you couldn't get a robust copper signature. So the gold becomes the proxy for copper gold mineralization. And beautifully what happened is we got a bunch of new targets. Our discovery at 513 looks like it can be extended you know, to the north along strike. There's a parallel structure. We see a lot of room for growth there. And then, as I say, you know, there's new targets that are undrilled and, you know, there's one in particular just as a dead ringer for the discovery we already made. It's called Remolino, it's, you know, 1.3 kilometer long, very strong geochemistry, great geophysics signature, the same as our discovery. And, you know, we're very anxious to get the drill bit into uh, into these targets. And the, that drilling would be later on in this year, maybe six months from now, something like that. We're going to like once we take a break from Santa Cecilia for the Chilean winter, we'll actually move to Margarita and begin drilling. So we'll basically have the drill turning largely continually for about a year. Wow. So we have drill programs for a year or more at both projects. I guess, could you talk a little bit about how you're going to manage that, you know, both financially and logistically? Yeah, well, logistically, it's pretty easy because, you know, once Chilean winter sets in and the snow flies up in the in the higher Cordillera, you stop, you know, um, so you go, you all our team starts focusing in on Margarita and we take, you know, June, July, August, September to complete that program and realize the, the potential. You know, we want to discover that second body of mineralization, which to my mind will really change the complexion of the project. And, you know, with respect to getting that work done. It gives us the same period of time to analyze all our results from Santa Cecilia. We've done a huge amount of work, you know, developing our targets, plan our drill program, and then, of course, go back up in October and hit that. So, you know, logistically, it's pretty easy just by geographics. And then from the financial end, you know, we've, we're have well, we well positioned right now. There's about $15 million in the treasury. And so, you know, well financed, you know, we look we know that, you know, this is a hungry machine or a hungry beast. Uh, these projects are required drilling and, and rightfully so. So, you know, obviously if a good window presents itself for financing, you know, we would, we know we're going to need money uh, as you never want to go down to zero, right? I mean, you always want to be ahead of the game and, and, and make sure you can execute your plans. And that's what we need to do. We need to just make sure the drill continues. We're executing well, and I believe the results will come. Michael, prior to working for Junior Explore Co's, you worked for the majors and you're obviously a geologist, but you also understand the corporate side of the business. Can you give us your, your take or your perspective on what's occurring in the cycle right now with the mergers and one company taking over another? What's the significance of what's happening? 
Sure. Well, from a, a humble ge- geological perspective uh, and working for the majors, you know, I look at some of these big takeovers that are that are being pursued right now, whether it's Glencore's uh, bid for for part of Tech or you know Newmont's bid for Newcrest. I, I view that as as really important. It's sort of indicating maybe the bottom. We're lifting off of the bottom. Um, you know, tech tech stocks maybe haven't performed as well as they have. We're kind of seeing that sentiment shift. Always, it comes to the majors first. Uh, you know, as they're producing and the metal prices are robust, and then it starts to trickle down to the juniors. Uh, you know, I always say we're the, the you know the first or we're the last to the party and the first to leave. And um, you know, we just want to make sure that you know when that sentiment shifts to juniors that we've performed well, that we've got the results in hand and that people go, Hey, look, Torx really, you know, they're onto it. They're discovering things. They're being disciplined uh, and getting the job done. And I think, you know, I'm hopeful obviously that the junior market will start um, picking up for us, but I do like that. We're seeing that the major is getting some love right now. Excellent. Company's uh, ticker symbol in Toronto is T-O-R-Q. And on the O-T-C-Q-X, it's T-R-B as in boy, M-F. Michael, thank you for this update and best of luck on the drill program. Thanks very much, Bill. 